Welcome to Watercolour Splashes. I'm Lorraine Brown and my artist life is all about watercolour. There is never just one way to paint. In Watercolour Splashes I will show you what works for me. Tips, techniques and experiments that you can try for yourself. Be inspired. Let's Watercolour Splash. Hi. Today, my inspiration are these lovely tulips. I've bought just a small bunch because it's winter time here, the heat is on, and they do go droopy very, very quickly. However, uh, I've decided I'll try and paint them today whilst they're looking fresh. I'm going to show you how I might use uh, a bunch of flowers like this, but create my own composition. So in other words, not painting it in a vase, which is what I've got them in here, but just using the flowers as my starting off point, maybe not even painting them in the colors that they are here. If, you're, if you've got a good uh, reference image of flowers and they do come in a variety of colors, you can use your image, but you can change the colors then to be any um, colors that you like. These are a rather nice um, purpley pink color, so a cool pink color, but they've got touches of yellow in them as well. So I've already had a little play at what I might use for colors for these, but when I get going, I might change my mind, but let's just see what I do. So I'm going to try and paint this in a uh, painting today. So let's see how we go. I'm going to start by finalizing some color choices. Um, having a look at these, I really do love the pretty colors that they are, so I'm not going to turn them into um, a yellow tulip or a purple tulip. I'm going to try and capture them in what I see here. My pinks might be slightly different, but I want to overall have a pinky um, tulip with um, a little bit of uh, yellow um, that I can see in them. So that's what I'm going to aim for. So I'm going to make some color choices now. Even though I have uh, pinks and yellows in my palette, I've pulled out some extra colors so that perhaps I can mix things up and keep it interesting for me and maybe choose something that I haven't used for a while uh, or just a new combination. So I'll have a little play first before I get going so that by the time I start the painting, I can be in my creative mode instead of thinking about my theory mode and hopefully get a painting that I like. So what I've done on here with my little play is I've looked at um, two Holbein colors here. No, one Holbein color, uh, which is Quinacridone Opera. Now this would be the same sort of color that you're going to get in um, Windsor & Newton Opera Rose or Daniel Smith's Opera Pink. Probably all the same type of um, color. But uh, sometimes it's the makeup of the paint that makes it flow different um, and just uh, behave a little bit differently. So I always feel if I'm using a color that I haven't used before, I might get something exciting. I might get a really good boost um, to, to the start. Now I chose a yellow here. Here it is, uh, Nicolazzo yellow from Daniel Smith. It's pretty bright but it might be good for making the greens as well. But also when you add it into this pink, um, when I add it into the pink, I get quite a nice combination. So if I put these two together here, a bit more pink in this one, So I can push it more to the orange side, which I can see in uh, parts of this here, um, or I can just keep it really pink. I just feel like it's pretty looking combination, and I think I'm going to use that for my tulips. The play that I had with the greens, I wasn't overly happy with it, so I'm going to try a little bit harder before I get going to make a choice for that. Um, because once I get painting, I don't want to have a mistake on my painting. I'd rather have the mistake on the choosing of the colours on just a little scrap of paper. So what I think I might try for my green is green gold. Daniel Smith make a green gold, Winsor & Newton make a green gold. Let me just move those tulips a little bit. Um, that's a really fresh, bright green. 
uh, but so that I can get some darker colour in it too, I'm going to put a blue in with it in places. So this is good old Windsor blue green shade, or if you've got a different brand of paint, it might say Thalo blue. So there's Thalo blue, and here's the green gold. Well, I think these four colours will be the staple of my painting. Um, it's going to have to have something else in it, but I'm not quite sure what that is right now. Um, as I get painting and I realise I get to the stage where perhaps I want to add some darks, I might be able to make another choice then. But right now, I'm going to leave that last choice and just see what happens with the first washes uh, to see what it is that, prep, that, it, that it needs. Having chosen my colours, done a little bit of play to see what I'm going to get. I've now decided what format I'm going to paint it in. I'm going to do it in portrait format. That means um, the flowers are, are going to look taller and not short coming this way. I've chosen a piece of 300 GSM, 140 pound paper. This is Saunders Waterford, cold press. It has a little bit of two. Um, but it's a favourite one um, to paint on. I've already had some blue on my fingers that's gone on there, but that's all right, that'll have to be green. Um, so I've got my colour choices, I've got my little play I've had. The brushes, I've just got a few ready. Um, I'm going to do my first washes with either this mop brush here, which is a number 12, a Skoda Aquario, um, or I might even use this breaking down sort of brush here it's splitting I don't know how much longer that's going to last sort of a Chinese brush here it says it's a size six but that keeps it nice and loose for those first washes then I've got two number eights here a sable and a synthetic for when perhaps I start um, doing something on dry paper the other thing I've thought of is that the tulips that I have here if you can see here are very closed up I've only bought them today um, and I don't want them all to look the same. So I need to have an idea of what a tulip looks like when it's opened up. So I went through my file and I've got these. So this just gives me an idea if I want to do something um, more open to choose a design from there. I'm not sure what, what that's going to be, but I've got everything ready before I go. Now I don't always draw, but if I want to put a... Um, a wash down for the background colours and I want the fresh colour where the flowers are going to be, I am going to have to think about a little bit of drawing because I'm going to have to think my composition beforehand because I certainly don't want to be dropping the green anywhere near where the pink is going to go because then I will just have a uh, mucky looking colour. So I do have to think about my composition. I've chosen a pink watercolour pencil to do this. If I make... Um, um, a design on here and I don't really like it by the time I add water to it the pencil will have dissolved into the water so it's a pretty good bet to do it with a pink one I've got to work out how many flowers to have I think um, this bunch has got about seven I'm going to probably do about five perhaps do an open one down here just got to think about what it would look like when it's hanging down because when they hang down they're certainly not going to be open these are all beautiful and standing up but I want something that's going to be hanging down. So I will just turn my trusty reference photo around to get the shapes that I want. So that gives me five little areas to know to leave them looking fresh to put the colours of the tulips on. And with the background, then I can do anything I like. So now I'm going to um, add that first wash and I'm going to, I think, wet the paper first. If I wet the paper with a spritzer, I'll have some dry paper and some wet paper. I always think this is a two-way bet as to then whether something's going to be loose or 
on dry paper where it's on the walk on the uh, wet parts it will swim around and where it's on the dry parts it will stay still and then I'll have to maneuver it to what I want rather than wet all the way around sometimes I do wet all the way around sometimes I don't so I'm going to start dropping in some color now I've got five tulips here but I may well like this to look like there's more so if I start off with the yellow in the background this I can either turn into tulip colour because it's part of that um, um, colours that I chose here, or I could turn it into greenery if I if it suits it more depending on how this first wash dries. So I will put the yellow down first and it won't match if this goes slightly over the um, shapes that I've got here because I'm going to turn them into tulips with this colour on anyway. So this is what I'll do to start off with. I'm going to just work around this here with a first wash and I'll see what it first wash down. Basically all I've done is covered up the white of the paper where I don't need it. It's soft, it's very wet, it won't leave any hard lines, it will just give me a nice base to then work on to put the foliage, the stems and create the tulips. So now I have to let that dry. I prefer to let the paintings dry naturally, but sometimes we have to take the hair dry to it. We've either got time constraints we want to get on, or we're loving what we're doing and we won't wait for it to dry. But the whole time you let it air dry, the colour is still doing some mixing. The whole time there's moisture left on the paper. And sometimes you're actually stopping that process by putting the hair dryer on it when something magic could have happened but I've taken the hairdryer to it so we can carry on. Now I've got it um, dry, I'm looking at it, and the white spaces that I've left to put the tulips in, well, they're too small. Um, so I haven't got that lovely feature one that I wanted down here because it's going to be too small. I've got a really big space up here in the middle, and so I'm thinking, given it's very yellow there, I could easily add another one there. So I probably don't even need a um, pencil to do that. But I'm thinking if I put the pink over the top in that space, could I get a bigger tulip that I want in this area here? And I think I probably could. It's obviously you've still got to be in keeping with these, but they're a bit more closed up and I want one that looks a little bit more open. So I'm thinking maybe something a bit more like that. I think I can make this into a bigger tulip shape up here, which is sort of what I had in mind. So I'm going to reserve that for a middle one. So now the idea is at least to paint some. Now my experience is with my flowers, by the time I'm on my third one, that comes out okay. My first one generally gets overworked, my second one's a good practice and the third one is the best. <laughs> So in saying that, I'll work out, maybe I'll leave that one till last because he sort of is a bit of a feature right there. Uh, and I'll work on one of these back ones first of all. So I can look at my real tulips over here 
and take one of these and look at this for my inspiration or I can use a shape from my um, printed out darker coloured ones. So all I'm going to do now is turn these into some flowers and then work on some background. I'm going to be working on dry paper now for these so the paint won't go further than the tulip shape because there's no water beyond it so it can't go swimming off anywhere of its own choosing. It can only go where I'm putting it down. So I'm not being a slave to the colours that are on here. I'm just trying to get something that pleases me. That looks like tulips. Well, that feels good to have got one out of the way. The next one hopefully will be a bit easier and the third one will be my good one. Now, you have a choice when you're painting on dry paper. You could wet the area and drop your colours in or you could put the first colour down, another one down and let them play together with the moisture of each of the paint. Um, but you can mix it up just because you do one one way, you don't have to do the other one um, the same way. The other thing is, when you put the first lot of colour down for the flower, you can either be quite deliberate and think you're going to get what you want with the first application of paint, or you could put a wash down and think to yourself, when that's dry, I can go and add some more to it, which is probably how I'm going to work. If you um, um, are more definite and put your paint down thicker, you've got to You've got to be absolutely sure about what you're um, uh, doing with it. Whereas I'm trying to get a variation in colour and this can be easier if you let them play on the paper. So I'm going to carry on and see if I can fill these tulips up. so well with the shape of these tulips. I don't like this big one I've decided to put in the middle here. So I've tried wiping it off with a tissue and start again on there. Whether that's going to work, I don't know, or have I muffed up the paper enough that it's not going to look very fresh, which is probably what's going to happen. So I'll just restart again with some shapes here. Hope for the best. 
If this doesn't come out, given this is bang smack in the middle of the painting, I'll start the whole thing again. So we'll just see how we go here. Sometimes this happens and that's what it's like when you paint with very little drawing, very little composition pre-planned. Sometimes you get magic, sometimes you get something that's just definitely not what you had in mind. But there's a learning thing from all of it. So you don't stop. First of all, you chuck everything at it that you possibly can before you give up. And um, if you can rescue something, you've learned so much from doing the rescuing. So having something go wrong gives you the opportunity to put your thinking cap on, get all of your skills out and see what it is you can do. Now I could be um, focusing on this too much and by the time I put all the greenery around there maybe it might not show maybe I um, won't be so disappointed with the shape if I get something else around it I think that's what I'll work on next fill in a lot of this paleness and maybe they'll look a lot fresher so let's just see how we go now adding some extra greens to this and see what it is I can do. Leave it alone there. Okay, greenery time. So I've got dry paper here. I think I'll just carry on with some dry paper. Painting some strappy leaves, not trying to make them necessarily real looking, but definitely want them to be strappy, definitely want them to be green. So I'll just get rid of a little bit of the pink off of here so that I can get some fresher looking green and um, we'll give that a shot. Right, green. Mm. Let's try this freeing up brush that I talked about here. So I've got the yellow that's already in the flowers and I can add that Windsor Blue green shade to that and I've got the green gold the green gold I find does go a little bit um, mucky so you've got to work hard to keep that looking fresh now I've got a better idea of, of greenery how they might if they were out growing in a field rather than standing in the vase that I've got here so I'll just try and think um, strappy leaves and it may well be negative painting here where the first colour that I put down could actually be the leaf colour and I'm painting what's in between but it's pretty light my first wash so I've got to get some dark on here to give myself something to play with.
So with that extra amount of greenery on here, the actual blooms are starting to look a little bit um, better. But I need to let that dry now and then just reshape a few um, areas, add in a few darks, and I think that will be enough to call this capturing the essence of these tulips that I bought home today. Okay, with that wash of greens dried, I'm not sure that looks any better. I've gone looking for a tulip painting that I did a while ago where I actually did the dark tulips. And I think this probably looked a bit like this until I added the darks. So that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to say, um, maybe just leave it at this many tulips. I might put a couple more in the background, but definitely try and fill in down here with some darks and see if I can add a bit of extra oomph to this painting. So I may well now have to dig into a darker color here to get something um, in here. So I might try indigo for that. Let's have a little look. Let's get a brush here. Okay, so if I take indigo, which is really dark, not much left there, but anyway, there's indigo and I put that green gold with it. I get a really, really dark green. So now I'm going to pick out some more um, leaves, I guess, by painting some depth in between. So this is a bit of negative painting here. So I've gone around a stem there for that tulip. Still vary up the color of this a little bit. And I just always look at my tulips thinking they look like little triangle shapes. So the first wash of color here is actually the leaf. And what I'm painting now, negative painting is going around them. So in other words, not painting the leaf, but painting in between. And I put a little bit down like this. Have a look and see if I like what I'm doing. Certainly starts adding some more depth to it. So I'll carry on working with some indigo now and just see if I can pull it together. I can still mix up the indigo a little bit by changing it and putting some of that Nicolazzo yellow in it to get a variation of colour here. And you don't have to put the darks around everywhere. It's a case of just trying to pick out some interesting looking shapes but start making it look like plenty of green foliage. Because after all, I wanted these to look like they were out in a field growing, not in a vase, which means there would be plenty of um, greenery. Some can be positively painted. Just depends what I've got here in my initial marks to play with. But it certainly helps once you start putting in some darks to make everything look alive. Not necessarily real. Real doesn't matter, but interesting does. <clears throat> Don't really like this green one up here, so I might just try changing that a little bit. The shape of that one. So I'm not going to do too much more to this, but you can just watch while I move around, looking to see if I can get something a bit more pleasing.
Okay, but I think I've pushed this painting as far as I can go. Spend a couple of hours on a Sunday afternoon, having a bit of fun, moving my brushes and every part of painting that you do, whether something comes out brilliantly or not so brilliantly, everything that you do all adds to your journey. So I've taken um, some color um, choices, see what I can do with them. Will they work for my tulip painting? Done some negative painting. Bit of splashing always helps, it loosens things up. And um, just call that one done. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye.